Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. In this powerful message, Fundamentals of Spiritual Warfare, Apostle Michael Orokpo equips you for the battles of life. Learn the key principles to stand strong against spiritual challenges. Discover how the Word of God is your ultimate weapon in spiritual warfare. Experience the power of united prayer to overcome any obstacle. Arm yourself with divine strategies for victory, empowering you with the fundamentals of spiritual warfare. Are they thieves? There are criminals, but not everybody is a thief. Find out what they are doing and check your spirit. If there's a witness that this thing is about kingdom, please don't allow anybody to persuade you. Be at the forefront. Be at the forefront. Somebody did it so much, they called him son of consolation. The apostles, they nicknamed him. This one is son of consolation. Some people don't know why they are praying, but they are defeated. Because you, don't, you are not wearing boots. And when you enter the jungle, there are, there are spikes. The, those days when we were small, we used to call it chuku chuku. There are chuku chuku on the path. So you will match a lot of chuku chuku. And if you match it, <laughs> you will have injuries. If it's not treated quick, it will decay. So you can't move anymore. That's why your mates, you are seeing your mates go ahead of you say, why am I still here? You are here because you are not wearing boots. But from today, somebody will become equipped with the boot of the spirit. The readiness for advancing the gospel of peace. I come in the volume of the books. It was written about me. I come in the volume. Volume of the books. Your first weapon is the whole armor of God. And after you wear the breastplate of righteousness, it says, Take up the shield of faith. You must come to a point where you trust God and God only. Otherwise, you will go down. I told you yesterday we pray, we fast, we give. We do everything we need to give, but we don't put our trust in any of those things. We trust one and him only. Jesus, the Lord. That's faith. Jesus, the Lord. He's the only Lord. Prayer is not our Lord. Fasting is not our Lord. Giving is not our Lord. Only Jesus is Lord. There's no contesting it. He's sovereign. And we believe him. He said, whoever come to him must believe that he is. It's not they are. Is he is there's only one to trust him then you will know that is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him so we pray because we trust Jesus we fast because we trust Jesus we give because we trust Jesus those things are all a means to an end our confidence is in the Lord the Muslims do pray the Hindu pray all the religious of the world fast so our strength is not the prayer our strength is not the fasting it's our confidence in the lord our god our confidence in jesus the lord he said when you do that then the rema word begins to come to you that's your sword in the spirit you want to cut off the tongue of the leviathan then rema must come rema must come if rema does not come you'll be a victim in battle this one now is not the scripture you you meditated these are the arrows that the holy ghost shoots through your spirit man and so you didn't contemplate it you showed up there was battle and something jumps out of you and when you release it it's like a bow in the hands of a mighty warrior first weapon put on the whole armor of god he say you put it on it won't be put on you please sit down for a moment second weapon i told you is the name of jesus he said the name of the lord is a strong tower the righteous run it there in they are saved 
For this cause, God gave him a name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Every tongue should confess that Jesus is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, the name of Jesus is not just pronouncing it. You can, you can, but coming in the name of Jesus is beyond pronouncing it. It means knowing that you represent Jesus in every situation. When you are talking, you will talk in that name. When you are coming, you will come in that name. You will act in that name. So there's nothing wrong in pronouncing it, but if you don't know that you represent him, even if you pronounce it, nothing will happen. So before you pronounce the name, make sure you are aware that you represent the name. So when you come, Jesus has come. That's what it means to come in the name of the Lord. Coming in the name of the Lord means you are standing in his stead. It's just like a, somebody comes to stand in the stead of the governor. That's what it means. He will sit where the governor should sit. When they want the governor to talk, he will rise up and talk because he is there on the behalf of the governor. It is first of all representing him, then talking in his name. That's the second weapon that we have. If we will win the battles ahead of us. Number three, I said concerning our weapon, prophetic words. Psalm 107 verse 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their affliction. He sent his word. When the word of the Lord comes to you, you can bank on it with your life. It will never fail. He said heaven and earth will pass away. Not one jot or tittle. If that word is animated in your spirit, go and sleep. The battle is over. It will not just give wisdom. It will paralyze the opponent. Prophetic words. All of these things bring you victory. And I spoke about holy living. Ephesians 4 27. He said giving no place to the devil. If you give place to the devil, he will destroy you. Ecclesiastes 10 8. He said if you break the hedge, the serpent will bite you. So the serpent can bite until you break the hedge. This is why most people, when the devil is fighting them, he's luring them into iniquity. They think it's a pleasure thing that when they do, they'll say, Lord, I'm sorry. You are sorry, you'll be forgiven. But you will go through a season of torment and pain because you have broken the hedge. You will have to use these principles again to engender victory. So you need to know your enemy, men, wicked men, demons, and principalities, powers, rulers, and of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. You need to understand the dimensions of battle that Satan brings against people. And you also need to know your weapon or your weapons. These are the things we dealt with last week. Now, let me show you in the next 30 minutes the dynamics of battle, both with men, with demons, and then with your flesh. Because when you are dealing with the dynamics of battles, there are dynamics that are men-oriented. There are dynamics that are flesh-oriented. We call those ones patterns of the bloodline. If you yield to them, you will be cut off. They say the spirit wars against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit and the two is one against the other. So there is a warfare going on among men there is a warfare going on between the flesh and the spirit if you don't mortify the flesh although jesus has taken away the legality but you create room and a platform for the devil to subdue you and then there is an outright warfare going on against spirits let's begin with men my goal for this teaching tonight is to fortify you with wisdom so I'll pick some of these things one after the other, show you how they work, and show you the antidote for each. See, Christianity is a life of devotion and a life of dedication. Don't make any mistake about it. Oh. Most people think Christianity is just about coming to church. That's why they have problem. See, we practice life in the spirit. So you must get the scriptures that speaks about the operations and sentence yourself to those scriptures.
can live out those operations if you will have victory. This is why many will never be delivered. They think the whole thing is just coming to church and declarations are made. There are some battles that you only conquer if you have your own order. I'm telling you, if you like, go to a mountain. They should pour oil on your head. If you are not careful, you will intensify the battle. Because Satan will discover you are now looking for victory. Uh -huh. So they will come against you in a more intense way. There are battles that if you don't have an altar, no matter who prayed for you, at best you have momentary victory. But what will come the next season, it will sweep you off. There are other battles that you will never conquer until you deal with certain fleshly tendencies. So if God wants to give you victory, he will give you laws around your body, your eye, your ear, your tongue. There are certain battles you will never win if you continue to gossip. You will see yourself stagnated for 30 years. And you ask, if you, in fact, sometimes you get offended, blaming everybody. You don't know the root of that battle is that you have pampered flesh. And so long as you continue with that gossip, nothing will deliver you. Because that is the gate the devil uses. There are battles you will never win, except as you put bitterness away from your heart. So if the devil wants to enslave you, he keeps causing problems between you and people. And you will not understand. Why is this fasting not working? Why is this anointing oil? Why is this giving not working? Bitterness is the key. If you don't remove it, you will never win. So you need a lot of wisdom and spiritual intelligence if you are fighting in spiritual battles. So let's begin. Battles that are oriented towards men. These are the most treacherous battles. As far as warfare is concerned when men are involved you know why <laughs> sometimes even god is limited when men are involved because they can't override their will they have jurisdiction in the realm and then sometimes the love of god allows him to give them too much room for repentance and in that season, if you are not strong, you might be plundered. Hope you know, if some witches died 10 years ago, some people would not have died. But the, the love and mercy, they were giving them room to repent. So they don't go to hell. So when it is put on the scales of balances, it's better for the born again Christian to go home. <laughs> if the born again Christian cannot fight, <laughs> if you know battles with men you will be careful the witch will be allowed mercy to repent God will be sending prophets to the village to preach and you if you don't fight that witch in the season of their conversion before they are converted some born again Christians who don't know how to fight will go home and the Bible says precious in the eyes of the Lord is the dying of the saints so God does not endorse it. But at least if the Christian die, the soul is not lost. So if the Christian does not want to die, he must learn how to stand his ground and say, I go nowhere. Suffer not the witch to live. If you don't repent, you will die. It's <laughs> battle. It's battle. Have you not seen many witches? When they repent, they now start confessing. I killed three pastors. I killed two. It will not be you. <laughs> I killed tw 20 Christians. 20 who? Your head will not roll. Your blood will not be spilled. You will stand your ground and live your life to the full. In the name of Jesus. But for you not to fall, learn wisdom. How do you deal with men? Understand the battle and understand the antidote. Number one, how do men fight? They set stumbling blocks in your path. This is why many have not made progress in 10 years. It's not a principality that came, it's men. Somebody went to your boss and said, watch this guy, you'll be careful. The last time I spoke with him, the ambition I saw, if you are not careful, this guy will bring you down. And that testimony against you that you were not even privy to will become the reason why they will remove your file and put it under the table for 10 years it's called stumbling block that's what men do and it happens even in church you sit with people that matter 
and then somebody comes and sits there and acts as if he's advising you be careful this is your stubbornness i've seen the way you did like this did like this be careful meanwhile they are sending a message to the person who is your boss to see okay uh, he's uh what did you say he did uh, okay 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 you will think if you are not discerning you will think it's advice oh yes thank you sir i will it's a lie he's sending a message to your boss so that you'll be destroyed they are called stumbling blocks if you don't know it you'll be a victim somebody comes in public and calls your name and say okay you will go far but uh maybe this and that if you can then you will go far meanwhile he has told everybody that you are a, a bad person meanwhile you will think it's an advice it's a lie it's battle i know this thing god has opened my eyes to a lot of things if you don't know how to fight this whether on your job or in church you will discover that your work will be slow you will not know why others didn't do half as much as you have done yet they are promoted why are you they are stumbling blocks you must master how to remove them if you don't know how to remove them you will be in trouble how do you remove them number one through discernment there are places you shouldn't go to even if you are invited if you go you'll be vulnerable that's why i said in isaiah i think 30 verse 20 check it for me it says if you are in the path whether be to the right or to the left you will hear a voice behind you telling you the way that you should go because if you are not careful you'll be the one to set yourself up this is how men fight you may never see them because they are like serpents and they will create stumbling blocks everywhere you turn there's a limitation sometimes you can go to some places don't talk they will ask you a question what do you think say hmm hmm it's what it's what <laughs> it's what because they want to create stumbling blocks in your path if you will go far you need discernment it's not every battle that is fall and die oh. that's why most of us have been praying fall and die we have not moved battles that slow you down sometimes they come in form of stumbling block but most christians don't have discernment and wisdom the bible said david behaved himself wisely wisely before the king he knew what to say he knew where to go to because he knew that the adversaries are many the second way to conquer this particular battle is to call upon the name of god he said for thou O lord are a shield for me my glory and the lifter up of my head because stumbling blocks are designed to keep you in one place so if you don't know how to call upon god you will be in trouble many a day that have risen up against me setting traps all over he said but thou oh lord you are a shield for me this is why i told you there are four prayers you must learn how to pray number one lord have mercy on me number two lord help me number three lord thank you because he's doing so much you are not aware of and number four keep me in your will because men I guess see those of you who are in corridors of power you know what i'm saying you come to work today your boss is laughing with you and he said you know that thing that project in two weeks time we'll just have it done somebody now heard hey so he's the one the next three days be wise they will go to say things and then you show up the fourth day the same boss that said you will do something you will greet him in once again they have set stumbling blocks they have set stumbling blocks so when you go home you know what to do go and lock the door wear your box and shirt be ready for war lord thou that lifted the horn of the helpless exhort your servant if you don't know how to pray this prayer you will enter a pit stumbling blocks number two sit down i don't have time how do men fight they take advantage of your graciousness this is why you must be careful to be led if you are not careful it is your kindness and your graciousness that will kill you 
in second samuel chapter 10 verse 1 to 19 an amorite king that david was trying to be gracious to his name was hanun he lost somebody and david sent men to give him gifts and to salute him the guy said oh these are spies and he barbed one part of their head tore their garment naked and sent them back what have you not been there before where you gave somebody water they say you are a witch you want to kill him he won't tell you the next you start hearing that oh look at that one she gave me water she think i will drink i know her see be careful who you are kind to kindness is a gift but you must know who to be kind to see this is why christians who don't have a relationship with god they are like donkeys they just kill them anyhow because they, they set themselves up they don't know there are some people you are polite to it becomes a weapon against you there are some people you honor it becomes a weapon against you they take what you said and thwart it against you and they ensnare you just for loving them just for honoring them is warfare do you know how to deal with this battle let me show you number one withdraw withdraw from such company and straighten the misconception if you enter any company where they take your graciousness for for nonsense or they use it against you listen that's why some of the fathers will tell you go to where you are celebrated it doesn't mean you should be looking for where they are clapping for you it means be careful the company you associate with you are in a place where everybody is trying to use all your kindness your graciousness your honor to enslave you and they can do it for a long time withdraw yourself relationship is not by force if you allow naivety you will be buried and when you are buried they will preach a sermon with your name because it's heartlessness i've seen it i'm telling you withdraw and then if god allows you eh correct every misconception if you keep quiet where your destiny is being decided you'll be buried this is warfare there is no sentiment you must be very objective if you withstand isaiah 54 verse 17 hear what the bible said see naive people are victims in battle it said no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper he said every tongue that rises against thee he said in judgment thou shall condemn it's not god that will condemn for you don't keep quiet when people are trying to take advantage of your kindness first of all withdraw from them and correct every misconception let them know you are not stupid i'm telling you humility is not timidity otherwise they will keep pushing you down until you are destroyed and they are happy about it it's called battle with men men can be wicked i didn't know this before as a young person growing up things will happen they will tell me go to the public and talk well you will talk well they will turn it against you i had to go back to the bible and god told me if you don't withdraw you will die number two how do you handle this don't promote people to your circle who don't qualify some of you are here people come around you who should serve you you say you are my sister my sister and then you bring them into conversations that they have no business listening to and the next thing as they walk out of that conversation they thwart it and say what you never said and you will see that there's no confidentiality around your life that's why you may not go far if god does not help you you'll be in trouble you are doing business you met somebody on the street yesterday because the person spoke well spoke kindly you say ah this this person is a good person no? and the person sits down you are discussing your vision that god has not allowed you to speak in public and the person hears before you know what is happening that same vision somebody else is leaving it before you woke up and then you are wondering what happened you didn't have discernment to know who should come so how do you think the secular people work go and work in some organization there are corridors where you can't go to unless you are a staff at a certain level you can never you can be on the third floor for 10 years until you become a director you will never see the fifth floor because they don't have time for all of those things before you hear what you should do here participate in conversation you participate in, and cause problem because you are weak see some people don't hate you but they are not mature 
Learn this wisdom. Oh, because your life and your speed can be truncated because of battles. What you should achieve when you are 12, 20, 30, you are achieving at 60. It's a testimony, but it's also not a testimony. Because you went there late. You would have done much more if you knew what to do. Don't promote people and give them privileges they don't qualify for. Go to, to, to some of these secular men. If they want to have a conversation, they will tell you politely, please, can you wait outside? If they are not disrespecting you, they want to enter a meeting that you don't have credential to be part of. But you'll find Christians, gullible, anybody, some, you meet somebody one week, he comes to your house, he's in your bedroom. He sit down, you are, you are nice. And you are eating with the person in your bedroom. And you don't know why suddenly you and your wife begin to quarrel and quarrel won't finish. Because you allow them to see what they shouldn't see and hear what they shouldn't hear. Don't be gracious and your gracious becomes naivety. Withdraw. Don't promote people who don't qualify to participate in certain level. And number three, don't honor people beyond what they deserve. If you meet somebody that you should shake hands with, shake hands and go away. Make sure whatever you do with people, they should qualify for it. Otherwise, they will use it against you and destroy you. I'm telling you why most of us are struggling in life. If not for mercy, most people would have been destroyed because of the errors they have made. I've been so gracious and I've been a victim. You meet somebody today, he just came and you're on the altar, he said, my covenant brother. Covenant what? Brother from where? Do you know the meaning of covenant brother? Somebody shows up before you know what is happening. He wants to snap with you. He wants to hug you and you don't know him. Tomorrow he puts that picture in his office and anybody that visits him, he says, yeah, I was my friend the other day and uh, we were saying some things. We are doing a business. You can be part of it. And uh, this person is part of it and they, they use that picture to swindle people. <laughs> don't joke. Oh. Warfare is, is a treacherous ground. Only the wise survive. They will stand up and tell you, hey, all these people, they are hard. Oh. See, they are just forming as if they are God. Be joking. When you are naive, you will see the impact. Somebody who is a nobody, you don't know from anywhere, you just are associate and do things with publicly. Before you know what is happening, it will take 15 years out of your journey. Doors will shut against you, you will be reproached, you will be backslid, backlisted just because you didn't function in discernment by either promoting those who don't qualify or giving unnecessary honor and credibility to people who don't deserve it. Even those who help you, when you honor them, honor them objectively. I've seen too much danger in functioning without discernment. And I'm teaching you as sons and daughters of this house so that you will learn wisdom. Number three, how do you fight the warfare of men? You identify the battle and you know how to fight. The third battle is witchcraft. What is witchcraft? is intimidation and manipulation designed to compare allegiance through fear and if you read the bible it's littered everywhere nehemiah chapter 4 verse 1 to 23 nehemiah chapter 6 verse 1 to 14 sambalat and tobias wanted to intimidate nehemiah until he stopped building the walls of jerusalem so they want to force you compare you manipulate you intimidate you until you align to what they are saying it's a type of battle and many times people don't fulfill destiny because of these things first samuel 18 verse 10 to 11 first samuel 19 verse 1 to 24 king saw intimidated first of all manipulated david by trying to give him his daughter when manipulation didn't work, he started intimidating him. When intimidation didn't work, he went publicly confronting David to destroy him. It's called witchcraft. And most of us can't go forward today because of these battles. And we don't know what to do. That's why I'm telling you what to do. 
so that your destiny will count some people are not succeeding because their destinies were forced out of their hands witchcraft what is the key in this situation number one focus stay on what god told you don't let anybody manipulate you out of it don't let anybody intimidate you from what god has told you no matter what they tell you no matter how they pressure you tell yourself this is what god said if you stay focused to a very large extent witchcraft will not have power over you stay focused focus is key on this matter no matter what they told nehemiah they kept building we'll be hearing and building if you won't keep quiet a point came they had a sword on one hand and they were building on the other hand the building must continue don't let anybody manipulate you out of what you are doing see they come with manipulation if manipulation does not work they bring intimidation they try to put fear if intimidation does not work they go confrontational see fail doing what god told you it's an honorable way to fail for you to succeed in what god didn't tell you better fail in what god told you i told somebody some some years ago i said if what i'm doing here fail i will go to another city and continue doing it did you read the life of paul paul entered some city they kicked him out he kept preaching he said let's go to the next city he entered another city they stoned him to death he stood up he said let's go to the next city if you remain focused you will succeed if you remain focused you will break witchcraft most times we lose our focus don't talk about what is happening don't even have time for it channel your energy on what god has asked you to do and as you keep doing it a point will come your result will stop the witchcraft pastor chris taught us many years ago he said when they want to force you he said you keep growing a day will come you will grow too big to be concealed a day will come you will grow too big to be intimidated your greatest error will happen to you when you stop growing and you stop growing when you stop focusing on what god told you stay on course don't turn to the left don't turn to the right one day if god doesn't vindicate you your results will prove that those people are not serious i'm telling you too many people are not focused any little thing they go off track god told you go to a city raise an altar you'll show up somebody comes and tell you my brother relax over four people have come here if i will advise you do this do that and they manipulate them to live what god told them and others come they put fear in them it will not work this has happened this has happened forget all of those things withdraw from those things focus on what god told you if you fail it's your fault oh. you won't go to heaven and say is this person that made me to stay on track i can't tell you enough the power of focus if some of us were not focused we'll not be here witchcraft there's so much to say but we don't have time number four they battle with men after witchcraft you now have conspiracy conspiracy see these are the things men deal with every day and they don't know why they are not rising they don't know why they are not making progress it's because they either take it for granted or they didn't discern it one of the ways satan shuts men down is through very potent operations programmings of conspiracy daniel chapter 6 verse 1 to 28 the moment the king made daniel president of the realm all the princes gathered against him and they created a conspiracy around him first of all manipulating the king to do something that daniel's conviction will never allow him and before you know what was happening they hinted the king that the guy didn't do it so that he will be thrown to the lion's den if you don't know the operations of conspiracy you will be shocked too. genesis 37 verse 12 to 36 joseph's brother conspired brothers conspired against him unless you are not going anywhere if you are going somewhere you will fight some or all of these battles telling you people will just gang up against you for no reason sometimes they use your mistakes sometimes they lie against you sometimes they create a system 
that you must fall to but by all means they want to stop you it's called conspiracy a confederacy of men against you ensuring that you don't make progress how do you deal with it number one maintain your devotion to god don't join politics because of conspiracy you will give a reason for you to fail even though they ganged up against joseph he never joined them for once when they sinned he will say it to the father this and this and this is what they are doing don't go and become a politician because they conspired against you you will lose because even if you join them through politics you are not one of them they know so the best thing you can do for yourself is maintain your devotion when they conspired against daniel the bible said three times a day the man kept his devotion nothing changed it and through to the plans they had daniel was thrown to the lions then but what happened the lion suddenly couldn't eat because that devotion is what will save you many people back out on god because of conspiracy you are in your workplace they conspire against you the next day you are in babalawo's house you will die they conspire against you the next thing you are consulting with people trying to use the ways of flesh to vindicate yourself you can't go anywhere the first thing to do is to maintain your devotion to god the second thing to do is to keep your heart pure because if you corrupt your heart your priesthood will become impotent you may know who said what don't bother tell yourself it's the devil using them no matter who no matter what tell yourself is the devil using them keep your heart pure because whether god will vindicate you or not is the texture of your heart you will consider if your heart is affected you have lost that's how to fight in the midst of conspiracy number three what do you do see a higher purpose in what is happening if you are the least nobody will fight you you are being fought because you are the head and so what do you do build a consciousness around that higher purpose and begin to function from that higher purpose and the day will come you will leave all your conspirators you know what david joseph said much later when he met his brothers he said you meant it for evil he said god meant it for good he sent me ahead so that i will preserve a generation that's how to think don't go and do politics don't allow your heart to be corrupt stay in your devotion to god and see a higher purpose that's how to dismantle conspiracy a point will come when they see that you don't care they will become threatened and not too long they will start fighting in their camp because when you start making certain progress some people will say oh this guy they move over. you will notice that betrayers will begin some will come and tell you is this person that said this i don't know still don't join them say it's well it's well don't say anything it's well it's well keep going keep going keep going the time to talk is when you become the prince of egypt when they come to buy food that's when you will sit down and say who are you who do you know me <laughs> that's when to talk some of you talk too early you are still in potiphar's house you are talking oh god you have not grown yet you have not grown see maintain consciousness maintain consciousness some of you talk too early you are at the head of the prisoners you are talking wait wait the bible said until the time that his word came there is a time to talk he said the word of the lord tried him the king sent for to lose him until the status of royalty come don't speak when that time come they will come to you for survivor and when they come they prove that your heart was not bitter help them don't insult them help them but let there be a situation where you tell them i am the one you threw into a pit i'm the one you sold to the egyptians but you see you thought you wanted to kill me but god was sending me on an errand god was sending me on an error that's how to function brothers and sisters most of you sank in conspiracy because your heart became bitter don't look at Martha. don't look at jay don't look at victor don't look at gabriel look onto the hills from whence cometh your help your help coming from the lord the maker of the heavens and the earth he will not allow your feet to be moved him that keepeth israel neither sleeps nor slumbers what i'm preaching now see some of you it looks like i'm telling the story of your life because the journey of greatness is the same 
So if these things are happening to you, don't cry, brother. Celebrate. It means you are part of the great. Don't cry, brother. Celebrate. It means you are part of the head. You are part of the leaders. You are part of the champion. But there is a technology of wisdom and discernment. Over my life, oh Yahweh. Over my life, oh Yahweh. Only you, only you be praised. Let only you be praised. Let only you be praised. Let only you be praised. Yahweh, you will be praised. Yahweh, you will be praised. Oh. Yahweh, you will be praised. Yahweh, you will be praised. Sit down, sit down. See. These things I'm telling you, write them down and practice them. Some of you are in the middle of conspiracy now. Take one month. I will Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. In your precious name, Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.